So last week I created the perfect striker in Football Manager 2022 with attributes of 20 in absolutely everything. This week we're doing the exact same thing, but with a goalkeeper. Once again, I've placed this at my nearest non-league club, Boston United, and we're going to simulate his entire career to find out how well he does. So last time out with the striker, they didn't actually do as well as we thought they were going to. Now, a lot of you guys suggested in the comments section that because he's a perfect player, he might have been playing in midfield or even at centre-back at some points. With a goalkeeper, though, I feel it's very unlikely that they're going to play outside of the goalkeeping position. However... You never know, they may end up playing them somewhere else at some point because they are perfect in every single position essentially with 20 out of 20 attributes. I'll also be very interested to find out if they're on penalty duties or free kick duties because again they've got perfect penalty taking and perfect free kick taking abilities. But rather than jumping at different points of this player's career we're going to go straight to the end where he retires. I'm so excited to find out like how many clubs he's played for, at what level he reached, like how many World Cups he may have won because he's the best keeper in the world, surely he just keep clean sheets at every World Cup. And so at the age of 36, just before he retires from football, the keeper Tom FM is at Crystal Palace. Okay. Which I can understand, you know, maybe on his way down he'd join Crystal Palace, but he's literally the greatest footballer of all time. Interesting that pace and acceleration and bravery have all gone down a little bit. We do have freeze attributes turned on, but... Sometimes if players get injured, it will decrease their attributes a little bit. So obviously an injury has affected him slightly. But okay, he's ended up at Crystal Palace. Where's he been for the rest of his career? Um, Crystal Palace for the entirety. Well, I'm sorry for wasting your time. I, uh, sorry, I can't, what? You were meant to go from Boston to Real Madrid, Liverpool, Man City, Bayern Munich, PSG. And you spent the entire career at Palace. How and why? I mean, unless Crystal Palace have turned into the absolute powerhouses of the Premier League, then that might be acceptable. But I don't think they will have done. So since this experiment started, Crystal Palace have come second once in 2034 and won it actually in 38-39. So they're good, but not... Arsenal, Man City, Liverpool good. But I would like to think actually that the keeper has actually turned Crystal Palace into this incredible team. If we just click on Palace for example and look at their senior squad and we change this view to a uh, experiment view so we can actually see the current ability of players. The current ability isn't amazing. Like obviously the keeper's got 200 out of 200. There's a few players with over 150 but that's pretty standard for the Premier League. Like it's not a, it's not an incredible team. So I'd like to think that this guy has actually got them to the top. They won the Premier League in 38-39. One second. If I load up the save file from that season, they actually won the title by a single point ahead of Arsenal and Liverpool. But if we look at the current ability of the team, yeah, it's not great at all. Like, it's, it's pretty average. So I'd like to say that they've won the Premier League title solely because of this keeper. If we compare it to the Arsenal team, you can see they've got players with uh, over 100... Basically, most players who are playing are over 150 current ability. And if we look at Liverpool, it's a very similar story, although the Arsenal team is a little bit better. Okay, so we've maybe worked out that this keeper has single-handedly won the Premier League title for Crystal Palace. But why did he never leave? Like, why did other clubs not get interested? I guess one explanation for it, actually, is his hidden attribute of loyalty will be 20 out of 20. So he's just incredibly loyal to Crystal Palace. I think maybe in future experiments, we just put it to, like, zero. So let's look through some individual awards for this keeper then. Uh, he has won the men's best goalkeeper in 2041, 2039, uh, 2037 and actually 2026 as well. Went for a long period of time where he didn't win the best keeper in the world but um, Meslier did on several occasions and there's no way Meslier is better than this keeper but he was playing for Real Madrid. And that's the difference, right? He will win those best keeper awards on the ground he's playing at Real Madrid with a defence that's absolutely incredible. If our keeper was at Real Madrid, imagine how many awards he would have won. World Golden Glove, uh, three of those have been won, 2026, 2037 and 2039. But again, Meslier also won three. Never won the Ballon d'Or. Now, I'm going to look through a few of these years, but um, as I scroll down, not even the top three in a lot of these 
Uh, which is not surprising, really, because keepers never get anywhere near this. And as a result, never won FIFA Best Player as well, which is like the other sort of award. Did pick up two under-21 best players, though, which is pretty interesting. So a keeper has won this, and it is Tom FM 2025 and 2026, when he was 19 and 20 years old. Also, mad that he won so many awards in 2026 when he was just 20 years old. That must have been a great season for Palace somehow. Now, how many times does Tom FM appear in the FIFA Team of the Year? Well, it starts off in 2026 with his first appearance how many more are we going to see as we scroll through well by looks of things uh, not many because he's uh in it once again in 2037 so an 11-year wait for his second appearance in the team of the year and then also got it in 2039 as well and 20 oh, that's no just those three times this is like an overall thing so Wow. Also, uh, no goals scored at all. We did speculate that he could be on penalties and free kicks, but clearly was never actually given the responsibility of them. He has also gone on to win two Europa Leagues with Crystal Palace as well in 32 and 37, an FA Cup in 36, and two Conference Leagues as well, but never the Champions League. Now, with 183 appearances for England, surely there he will have the ability to shine. And England won the World Cup in 2022, which bodes well for this year, but... I don't think he would have been the goalkeeper then. European Championships won in 24, 28, 36 and 40. I imagine he was the keeper for all of those. And then three UEFA Nations League as well. I imagine he was a keeper in all of those competitions as well. But I've scrolled down to the bottom of his competitions that he's won and he got his first England cap after the 22 World Cup. So yeah, no World Cup. But at least Denmark have won the World Cup. Congratulations to Denmark beating Germany in a final. Wow. Poor Tom FM. Came third at one point, but obviously the England team weren't quite good enough. Oh, what a shame. But obviously, as we have mentioned, uh, four of the five European championships that he's played in, he won. So, I mean, that's that's not a bad return. See, this is interesting. This is really interesting. Um, I think maybe there's a few things we can tweak in the future, particularly with hidden attributes such as loyalty, which might make a difference as to how these players move to different clubs. I do enjoy these experiments though. I think we'll do a manager one soon and maybe we should do like a centre midfielder and a centre back at some point or wingers. I mean, let me know what you want to see in the comment section below. So thank you very much for watching today's video. I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you have done, drop a like on the video for me, subscribe if you're new around here and leave a comment down below for the YouTube algorithm. Them. Until next time, have a good one. Goodbye.